Hi guys. My last unpopular opinions video was fun to make and I had a lot more unpopular opinions so here is another video about them. These are also rather meta, but I know they are unpopular so please be respectful about it. Comment if you agree or disagree and why. Since I did get one of those comments on the first video and it was really nice to read. Without further ado, let's get started. It's fine for a group to make music that all sounds the same. Groups like GFriend, Card, and Momoland get a lot of hate for having music that all sounds the same. I am not going to defend them by saying that their music is actually different if you try listening to it like many fans of these groups try to do, because it is undeniable that all of their title tracks sound like literal copies of their last ones. When fans try to defend groups with this excuse it doesn't really work because no one is willing to investigate a group thoroughly by listening to their b-sides and stuff. We only know the tracks that are widely known, and those happen to be the ones that all sound the same. However, this fact should not be a big deal. These groups are making music that they know their fans will like, since it's not like they would continue to make copies of music that wasn't popular. No one ever said you actually had to like the music, and if you don't like it then just don't listen to those groups. If anything, it makes it easier to avoid since you know that you will dislike all music by those groups. Hating on them for it is really unnecessary. Also, it's not like the members are the ones composing the songs so if you actually are that mad about it, then complain to the company and leave the group alone. Girl crush is not feminism. Okay so I'm not sure how unpopular this one is but I think it's important that this is said so I am including it. Girl crush does not equal feminism. People say that the lyrics are more empowering or whatever, but at least for international fans this is not an excuse because we can't understand anything anyways. Western media outlets especially tout girl crush groups as the best thing ever just because Blackpink is the most popular girl group internationally and they just happen to have a girl crush concept. I don't even know if these western journalists are aware of the existence of other concepts, and when they do talk about cute concepts they call it conventional. Saying that girl crush concepts are feminism defeats the point of feminism. A common misconception about feminism as a whole is that it pushes women to be more badass and yes, do more girl crushy things, but that's not how it works. Feminism is about the power of choice for women, and while girl crush is a choice that you can make, cute concepts are also a choice. This extends to society as a whole. For example, feminism is not calling for women to wear more revealing clothing. It is opening the choice to wear that type of clothing. You are still a feminist if you choose not to wear revealing clothing. Choosing to do a cute concept should be considered feminism just as much as choosing a girl crush one. One concept is not better than another. Also, calling girl crush peak feminism is bad for feminism because if you are going in that direction, you think girl crush is as feminism as it gets, and that is really lame. Girl crush itself reduces feminism to stereotypes. In of itself, girls in K-pop should not just be divided into cute and girl crush as those categories have so much in them and dividing them like that is denying the complexity and artistry of K-pop. I like it when a group has a small fandom. This one sounds weird but let me explain. There are things about having a small fandom and standing a so called underrated group that make the experience more fun for fans. I think that groups with smaller fandoms end up having a more tight knit fandom. And when you find another person who likes that same group you instantly have more of a connection. Of course I wish that groups with smaller fandoms had more fans because that is better for the group as a whole. But it isn't for the fan culture. Take for example Luna. Who had the whole Stan Luna joke. Orbits felt compelled to tell people everywhere to Stan Luna because Luna needed more fans to stay afloat. Which in turn made Stan Luna into a whole thing. Within the fandom there are even more fun jokes. And if you are an Orbit you end up knowing every single one because the fandom is small enough that everyone is in touch with everything. If Luna became as big as BTS, I don't think that this would still be the case. No offense to armies, but they are a dime a dozen and if you find a K-pop fan there is a much higher likelihood that they are a fan of a few big groups than a specific quote unquote underrated group. In the end, it comes down to what you like more, the group's success or fandom culture. The groups that I happen to like are on the bigger side, and a lot of the time I wish they weren't. I think that groups like Luna have hit the exact middle of the road on this issue because their fandoms are small enough to have this culture but big enough to ensure the success of their groups. 
I don't care what an idol does off camera. I did say something about this in my Jimin and Mina video, but I'm going to elaborate on it here. What idols do off camera is their own business. For goodness sake they could be a serial killer off camera and while it certainly wouldn't be good for them, it's not like I would ever know about it so it would be fine for me to stand them. I think that idols on camera and off camera lives and to an extent personalities should be kept separate, since fans only see the on camera part anyways who cares what they do otherwise. Idols can be as stupid or as bad people as they want, but at least in the fans eyes it doesn't matter. The 97 line scandal, where some popular male idols went out despite the pandemic being a thing in Korea, should not have been a scandal at all because those idols were doing something in their private lives that should not have been intruded on. I don't really care to discuss the morals of what they actually did. But no matter what it was no one should have known about it. Now that we do know about it we can discuss, but it shouldn't have been revealed in the first place. This also goes along with idols dating. I sincerely hope that none of the idols I stand will publicly reveal relationships they are in if they are in them. Not because I am against them dating but because of how it could affect their career. You always see those comments from Knets especially saying how they feel like their idols were lying to them when they didn't reveal their relationship. But who cares if they're lying to you? It's their business. As far as I'm concerning they should be lying about it as much as they possibly can. If they lie well enough then no one will ever know that they were lying at all so you should not care. How cohesive an album is is important. A lot of K-pop albums just sound messy and thrown together. Even if the songs on them individually sound great that doesn't mean that the album itself is actually good. I can literally love all the songs on an album but if there is no sort of theme whether that be in the lyrics or the musical style then I think the album is bad. The nature of K-pop makes it so that the idols aren't in charge of the music anyways. So that's why their companies just put any old track onto their albums and call it a day. There is no common thing among the tracks since half the time all of them have different producers and whatnot. It is also why mini albums are so much more common than regular albums, because companies prioritize just getting the product out as fast as possible. This is why I think that repackaged albums are some of the dumbest things ever. Like I get why they do it, the group needs to have a comeback and the company doesn't have enough songs for them. But I still don't like it, and with mini albums that are completely original. Having random mishmash songs does not have an excuse. For this reason I strongly dislike Twice's more and more album even though the songs were fine. Because all of them sounded like they were cast off from other projects. Conventional groups and concepts are fine. A group shouldn't have to do something mind-blowingly original in order for a comeback to be good. This kind of ties into my opinion about groups that make songs that all sound the same. If a group is making songs that not only sound similar to that group's past releases but also sound similar to the songs of other groups, that should be fine. They do it in order to cater to what they know K-pop fans in general will like, and are following trends. Don't promote a group you like because their concept is more quote unquote original than other groups because first of all, that is demeaning to other groups, and second of all who cares if your fave is more original? After all, just because it's unique doesn't mean it's good. Popular things are popular because more people think they are good so something that is meant to be different has a much higher chance of being bad. Also, no concept is truly original because though you yourself may not have heard of it, everything has been done before by someone. Somewhere. And this doesn't just mean within K-pop. K-pop as a whole copies western trends but a couple of years later as if to pretend like they didn't just directly copy it. If a group is over a year old, they aren't rookies. I saw me vs my subs video which was published recently where one of the categories was favorite rookie group and half of the people in the video said it see. This does not make any sense to me. After all, a group is only eligible for the rookie of the year award if they debuted during that year. So why should they be considered rookies afterwards? The term rookie is about how much experience you've had in the industry and doesn't have anything to do with popularity. Like I saw this music show rookie special that Dreamcatcher was on and I felt so bad because though they aren't as popular as others, they definitely aren't rookies. Unpopularity doesn't mean that you are a rookie, it just means that you are unpopular and those are very different things. 
It obviously goes the other way. Groups which are newly debuted and are majorly popular are still considered rookies even if their popularity means they are getting more activities and therefore more experience. So I don't see why K-pop fans don't make it go both ways. I put the cut off as a year old just because I think that after that period you should have gained enough experience. And that's also how awards shows do it. Pre-release singles are bad. Every group and their mother seem to be doing pre-release singles these days and everyone is hyping them up but I don't see the point. Companies are saying that pre-release singles will not be promoted like the title track will be. But the groups that do them have music videos that are title track quality. And they do and perform the songs on music shows anyways. It's almost like companies want to have all the hype of a comeback without actually having to make other songs. Who would have thunk it? Also Chung is having a physical album for her pre-release single play and they're trying to call it a maxi single or something. Like at that point they are just money hungry. That was so unnecessary. Honestly what the whole trend of pre-release singles is trying to do is copy western album cycles where the artist will release one album and then release singles and music videos from it. But K-pop becoming more like the western music industry is exactly what I don't want. Because the whole point of K-pop is that a lot of content comes out very quickly. And pre-release singles is an excuse for companies to look like they are putting out a lot of content without actually doing it. Which is so much worse. If you're going to do it the western way then at least do it more accurately. You should be releasing singles even after the album comes out in that case. Most of these pre-release singles are actually quite good and I don't know how the album is supposed to live up to it. You'd think that a pre-release will be worse but for example, Stay Tonight is basically the best song Chung Ha has ever released and I don't know what she is supposed to do. Anyways, we are just going to have to wait and see since she hasn't actually released the bloody album yet. Alright guys, that's going to be it for this video. I know it is a bit longer than the last one but I wanted to include some more opinions and I hope you found them interesting enough for your tastes. I said this one was going to be more group specific and I'm sorry that it wasn't. I'll see about that in a future video. No promises though. Bye guys, and I'll see you in the next one.